Welcome to our lectern line. To get a better idea of what mechanical efficiency is, we're going to do the very same problem we did on the previous video with one difference. In this case, friction, the coefficient of friction is not equal to zero, which means that we're going to have, in addition to the force pushing back against the block here, we're going to get a friction force pushing in this direction as well. Now, the normal force is going to be equal to one half the force applied at the top, because the symmetry, this force in the vertical direction is counteracted on both ends, half of it over here, A sub Y, and half of it over here, B sub Y, so the normal force is one half F, and the friction force is defined as a normal force times mu. Again, mechanical efficiency is simply the ratio of the work output divided by the work input. And with the work output, we're talking about the usable work output, so it's going to be R times dx divided by F times dy. Here we've already established the initial distance y sub naught and x sub naught and the differentials, the change in y here and the change in x there. So now let's use virtual work to try and figure out the mechanical efficiency. So here we're going to add up all the forces that are doing work. In this case, there's going to be three. This force here acting through this distance, this force here acting through this distance, and this force here acting through this distance as well. Now notice, in this case, the force is acting in the same direction as the displacement dy, so the angle between them is zero, the cosine of zero is one. But in these two cases, the forces are acting to the left, and the displacement is to the right, so the angle between the force and displacement is 180 degrees, and the cosine of 180 degrees is negative one. So when we add up all the forces doing virtual work, we get the first force, F, multiplied times dx, minus, because the angle of 180 degrees, the cosine of that is minus one, so we have minus R times dx, and minus the friction force, times dx, and all those add up to zero. So I've already skipped the step where I'm actually calculating the angle of zero, the, the cosine of zero, and the cosine of 180 degrees. For both of those gives us a negative one. Now the next step is we want to plug in what dx and, well, let's see here, this should be a dy, not a dx, because it's moving in the y direction. Okay, now we have to plug in what dx and dy are equal to. So here we get f, times dy, and dy, we want the magnitude of dy, so it's times L sine of theta d theta minus R times dx, which is times 2L cosine of theta d theta, and minus the friction force. Now the friction force is the normal force times mu, and the normal force is 1 half F, so this becomes 1 half F times mu, and times dx, and dx is again 2L times the cosine of theta d theta, and all that adds up to zero. Now simplifying things just a little bit, we have a 1 half and a 2. All of them have an L in them, it's set equal to zero, so we can divide both sides by L. We can divide both sides by d theta, and let's see what we have left at this point. All right. So that leaves us with F times the sine of theta minus 2R times the cosine of theta. And then here we have minus F mu times the cosine of theta is equal to zero. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to solve that equation for R so we can plug it into our efficiency equation. So let's do that. Let's solve this for R moving this over to the other side, and I'm turning the equation around, we end up with 2r times the cosine of theta is equal to, the left side now moves to the right, so we have f times the sine of theta, and then have minus f times mu times the cosine of theta. Okay, at this point I can probably factor out an f, and divide both sides by the two times the cosine of theta, so we have r is equal to one-half f times, in the numerator we have the sine of theta minus mu times the cosine of theta, and we divide the whole thing by the cosine of theta over here. And when we divide the cosine of theta into the numerator, 
we get r is equal to 1 half f times the tangent of theta minus the cosine divided by cosine is 1 minus mu. Now we go ahead and calculate the efficiency. So let me draw a line here so we don't get things mixed up. So now we can say that this is equal to, and I think I'm going to move that to the left, otherwise I'm going to run out of room. So the efficiency is equal to the work output, which is r times dx, divided by the work input, which is f times dy. So r is now defined as 1 half f times the tangent of theta minus mu, and we have to multiply that times dx, which is defined over here, times 2L cosine of theta d theta. And the whole thing is defined by f times dy, so we put an f here, and dy is defined over here. Again, we only want the magnitude of dy, which is L times the sine of theta d theta. Now, we're trying to get the efficiency out of that, so let's eliminate everything we can. We have an F here and an F there. We have an L at the top and an L at the bottom. Let's see here. We have a D theta and a D theta. And we have a cosine of theta divided by the sine of theta, which is the cotangent of theta. And we have a 1 half times 2, so that cancels out as well. So what do we have left? The efficiency is equal to, in the numerator, we have the tangent of theta minus mu that multiply times the cosine of theta and divide by the sine of theta, like this, which is the cotangent of theta. So then finally, we can, we can then write E the efficiency equal to the tangent times the cotangent, which is 1, minus mu times the cotangent of theta. Mu times the cotangent of theta. And this then becomes the efficiency of the mechanical work that we did here. So there's the efficiency as a function of the angle. Now let's try to make sense out of that answer. Notice the cotangent of theta becomes very large for very small angles. Matter of fact, mu times a very large number will be greater than 1. So basically, since it can never be greater than 1, since this efficiency can never be negative, of course, the efficiency will be 0 for very small angles of theta. So imagine that the angle of theta is very small. That means that the apparatus here will look more like this. And then if you push very hard on the top here, notice then the normal force would be very large and then the friction force would prevent any motion of the, of the apparatus, and so you'd have zero efficiency because you cannot do any real work, the block would not get pushed to the right. As the angle gets larger, the cotangent of that angle becomes smaller, eventually mu times the cotangent of the angle would be less than one, and your efficiency will be greater than zero. As the angle continues to get larger, 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 as the apparatus becomes like this, then you can see you have a better efficiency. You push here, and you can push the block down here, and the friction force will have less of an impact, and therefore the efficiency will continue to go up. So that's the answer to the efficiency due to mechanical action. The mechanical efficiency is the useful work output, not to work to overcome friction, but to work to actually do some real physical work here, the work output divided by the work input, and this is how we can then calculate that. Hopefully, this will clear up what we mean by mechanical efficiency.